What if you could build your own retro-futuristic gaming device? One that looks like it came straight out of a sci-fi movie and that actually works. Well, I invented one. It's tiny, it plays games, and today I'll show you exactly how I made it and how you can do it too. It's a straightforward and fun project that only uses a handful of components and a few 3D printed pieces. And the best part, it's fully open source, which means that you'll find all the schematics, 3D models and code you need, not just to recreate it, but to even program your own games. Now, for those of you who already know me, you might be asking, hey Plachi, are you drunk? Or, hey Plachi, why did you suddenly decide to build something useful and awesome? And to answer your questions... No, I am not drunk. And secondly, I was honestly getting a bit tired of building stuff that is purely funny and has like no other purpose for existing at all, like me. So I'm gonna start inventing cool stuff while maintaining my characteristic humorous style. Bro, you're not even funny. Shut up. It all started when I realized that I had this sick transparent OLED display that I bought two years ago and never actually used for any of my projects. So I decided to build something that had it as one of its main components. And seeing that it's pretty small, I thought of a few different inventions that could fit in the palm of my hand. Clearly, building the console was the coolest idea. For this project, we'll use the Xiao Sam D21, which is an Arduino-based microcontroller that I chose because of its tiny form factor and compatibility. You can find it for cheap on Amazon and for even cheaper on AliExpress. So let's get to business. We'll start by testing the OLED with the microcontroller. We want to see if we can display graphics at a high rate so the gameplay is smooth. By connecting them together following this diagram, which employs SPI communication, we can take advantage of faster transfer speeds. Once we've hooked everything up, we'll send data to the OLED and display some basic stuff. All right, maybe not that basic. Printing on the screen is very straightforward using the library Adafruit SSD1306. As you can see in the code, I programmed it to show letters, numbers, and basic shapes. And this is how it turned out. The refresh rate is pretty sweet, so we definitely won't have like laggy graphics when playing games. Also, if you notice some flickering, don't worry, that's not a flaw in the display. It's just the camera picking the refresh rate. It's like when you record a computer with your cell phone. In person, the display looks perfectly smooth. Another essential component that we need to build this console is a buzzer. You cannot play video games without sound, right? That's like driving a car that doesn't have AC. Yeah, it works, but you'll also have depression. Now, here's the thing, the Sam D21's IO pins can can't provide enough current to drive it directly. So to make this work, we'll use a MOSFET to control the buzzer. The setup is pretty straightforward. We connect the gate of the MOSFET to a GPIO pin on the SAMD21, the drain to one side of the buzzer, and the source to ground. The other side of the buzzer goes to VCC. To test it, I uploaded a simple script that changes the frequency played by adjusting this potentiometer. And the code is pretty simple. The faster the microcontroller turns the MOSFET on and off, the higher the pitch will be. Here's what it sounds like. I know what you're thinking. Oh, Plachi, you're such a genius. To which I reply, now that we have the OLED and the buzzer working, let's talk about the other components that we'll need to complete the console. First, we need buttons because well, I don't think I have to explain why. However, since this will be a retro futuristic device, I won't use regular buttons, but rather touch sensors. Ooh, they're pretty easy to use and I honestly love them because they make your projects feel super advanced. Next, we need a battery to make this thing portable. I'll be using a 150 milliamp hour LiPo battery. It has a small footprint and it should be able to give us a couple of hours of gameplay. Since the battery voltage ranges from 2.8 volts when it's discharged up to 4.2 volts when it's fully charged, we'll also need a voltage regulator to keep it at a steady 3.3 volts, the level at which the main components operate in. For this, we'll use a bug boost regulator, which is a very efficient component that not only lowers the battery voltage when it's charged, but also increases it when it discharges below the desired output. Other components that we'll also use are a battery charging module, a switch, resistors, and perf boards. Now that we have all the parts sorted out, I'll assemble everything on a breadboard and program it. And if you're wondering why we don't go straight to designing the enclosure, let me give you a quick tip. When building projects, I like to have the software ready before assembling the device. Because if I mess up the code, I can potentially damage some of the components. Or if something doesn't work, I won't know if it is because of a bug or because a connection is loose. Troubleshooting is way easier when all the components are exposed. I can quickly check the connections, reflash firmware, or swap out faulty parts without having to desolder tiny cables. Once everything is working perfectly, 
then you can start focusing on fitting everything in the enclosure. Believe me, I learned this shit the hard way. So as you can see, I built the circuit on the breadboard and it has every component that the console needs. We have the microcontroller, the buzzer with the MOSFET, the OLED display, five touch sensors for up, down, left, right and center, and the battery with the voltage regulator. I uploaded a simple script to test that everything is connected properly. It waits for a signal from one of the sensors and then shows on the display which one was pressed and plays a sound with the buzzer. It works perfectly when connected to USB power and also when connected to the battery, which is exactly what we want. Now, something that you need to know is that before this first test worked as I planned, I actually ran into a problem that made me think that I had messed up the circuit. After the code was uploaded, the microcontroller would crash and disconnect from the computer, something like this. Mm -hmm. Okay. What? Huh? What the f- Luckily, after some trial and error, I realized that the problem was actually a stupid bug in the code. But if this had happened after I assembled the console, I would have probably just jumped out the window. After confirming that the circuit works fine, it is now time to program the actual firmware of the console. The code will be divided into three main parts. First, we have the setup, which is where we will declare the pins, initialize the OLED display, show a quick startup animation, just like the one from old Game Boys, and then display the game selection menu. Next, we'll have the main loop, which is where the program will run. It basically waits for any of the touch sensors to be pressed and then performs an action. If the left or right sensors are pressed, then we'll move through the selection menu and see all the games that we programmed. And when the center sensor is touched, then we will select the game and start playing it. Finally, we have another tab in the Arduino code called Games, which is where you will find all the ones that I made and where you'll also be able to program your own. There are also two more tabs that include specific functions that I coded to make the firmware more efficient and bitmaps for the intro animation. You don't really need to modify anything that's on those two tabs unless you want to. Since I don't want to spoil the gameplay, I'll give you a complete demo once we finish the console. Yeah, that's, that's definitely the reason. Not like I haven't coded a single game yet. Now we can finally start the coolest part of the project. 3D modeling the enclosure, 3D printing it, and putting it together. For the design, I wanted to go towards something similar to a Game Boy, with some modifications of course, so Nintendo doesn't sue my ass. That classic design, together with the advanced electronics we're using, is what's gonna give us that retro futuristic feel. And this is what I came up with. As you can see, it has a simple rectangular form with round edges and an opening for the transparent OLED, which also extends to the back of the console to avoid blocking the see-through background. Here we also have the buttons, which are basically covers for the touch sensors. Below them, we have slits for the buzzer, so the sound can come out with getting diffused. On the inside, we have what I would call a skeleton, comprised of holes for the sensors and columns so we can place components on top of each other due to the limited horizontal space. The entire enclosure is divided into five different parts. The main body, the outer ring, the back lid, the display cover and the buttons. I 3D printed the main body and the cover in black, the outer ring, the back lid and the center button in silver, and the rest of the buttons in red. Before assembling everything, let's glue the main body to the outer ring first. Just in case we mess up, we can just reprint the parts before adding the electronics. Cool, so now we have all the parts of the enclosure, all the components we need, and the final code ready to be uploaded. Which means it's finally time to bring the console to life. We'll start by hot gluing the touch sensors into place. Make sure they're oriented exactly like this. Then we'll connect their power cables following this super duper diagram that I definitely didn't draw a minute ago. It looks a bit messy, but it's designed to minimize the number of wires. Just make sure none of them pass through the middle of the sensors, or they might randomly activate them. Next, we'll solder wires to the voltage regulator. One for VN, two for Vout, and three for ground. We'll glue it inside the case and hook up the touch sensor's power cables to one of the Vout wires and to ground. Now, let's secure the SAM D21 with a bit of hot glue and wire the sensor's outputs to the appropriate pins on the board. At this point, we can upload a test code to verify if the touch sensors are wired correctly. We'll connect the SAM D21 to the computer using a thin 90-degree USB-C connector. As you can see, the microcontroller detects each sensor when pressed. Before installing the charging board, we'll adjust its resistor to set the charging current. According to this table, for a specific battery, we need to use a 10K resistor. I did this by removing R3, soldering two wires to the tiny pads and then connecting them to the 10K resistor. I also used a bit of electrical tape to avoid short-circuiting any nearby components the resistor might touch. Then, we'll test it by connecting the battery and a multimeter in series to make sure the current is safe. And by safe, I mean the battery doesn't fucking explode. If everything checks out, we'll glue it down with the USB-C connector inserted through the outer ring opening. We'll tape the switch in place to hold it steady while we wire things up. Connect one side to the charging board, solder a ground, then connect the other side to the regulator's input. Now let's move on to the battery. Solder some thinner cables for flexibility, which are literally the ones we've been using so far. 
Hot glue it into place and wire the positive to the center pin of the switch and the negative to both the charging board and the regulator grounds. You can check if the charging board is connected to the battery by plugging in a USB-C cable and seeing if the red charging light turns on. Also, when you flip the switch, the SAMD21 power LED should also turn on. After that, we'll glue down the switch, then carefully place and hot glue the transparent OLED. Make sure the display is oriented exactly like this or it will never turn on. Next, we'll solder the OLED breakout board to the perf board. Be sure to leave 6 holes to the left and 2 to the bottom so it stays centered. We'll also solder the MOSFET, placing it on the rightmost side of the perf board. Again, leaving 2 free spaces at the bottom. And we'll add a 100 ohm resistor to its gate. Once that's done, we'll hot glue the perf board to the enclosure. Don't forget to trim its pin header so the perf board fits properly. We'll solder the remaining power wires from the voltage regulator to the left-hand side pins of the perf board. Then connect the breakout board and the MOSFET to those power rails and to their respective SAMD21 pins. The last component we're adding is the buzzer. We'll trim its pins, solder two wires, glue it in place, and connect it to VCC and the MOSFET drain. There is also a small 3D printed holder I made using translucent filament. We'll super glue it to the enclosure right above the display to keep it from shifting out of position. Now we'll cut a piece of acrylic to use as a screen protector for the OLED back cover. Not gonna lie, this was a little bit hard because I had never cut acrylic before. And that thing kept shattering. I almost started crying. A little tape will hold it in place. At this point, we'll clean both the back of the display and the inside of the acrylic protector, so it doesn't stay permanently dirty after we install it. We'll then super glue the OLED back cover to the enclosure and use a little tape to hold it in place while it dries. Finally, we'll glue the bottoms to the front, slap the Plachi logo on the back, because if it doesn't have the logo, is it even a real Plachi invention, huh? Upload the final code and screw in the back lid. Ladies and gentlemen, we did it. This looks and feels really awesome. It's small, so you can put it in your pocket. It has that retro futuristic vibe that makes it look like a device from a sci-fi movie. The custom touch controls, the transparent OLED, and the design itself are just Wow, I know, I know, I know I'm licking my own boots right now. But it's crazy to think that this is not just for show, it actually works. So now it's time to power it on and see what it can really do. To turn it on, simply flip the switch. You'll see a short intro animation, followed by the menu where you can choose between three games, Pong, Tic-Tac-Toe and Snake. I'll start with Pong. You only need the left and right buttons to play. At first, the gameplay is slow, but as you score more points, it speeds up, which obviously makes it more challenging. When you lose, your score is displayed and the game is reset. To exit, just touch and hold the center button for a couple of seconds. Next up is Tic-Tac-Toe. You can move through the grid using all the arrow buttons and place your X using the center button. The algorithm is relatively simple and works pretty well, but you could definitely tweak it to make the game even more fun. Just to show you all the outcomes, I'll first lose, then draw, and finally win. As before, to exit, just press and hold the center button. Lastly, here's Snake, probably my favorite. Like Tic-Tac-Toe, you use all the arrow buttons to move the snake. As you collect the dots, the snake grows longer and the game gets progressively harder. When you lose, your score is shown and the game resets. And as you might already know, to exit, just hold the center button. To turn off the console, just flip the switch back to its original position. To charge it, plug it into a 5V power supply using a USB-C cable. The red light means it's charging and the blue one means it's fully charged. If you ask me, a simple yet very elegant and cool project. If you're interested in building this console yourself, then join my Discord server. You'll be able to find all the files you need in there, including the schematics, the 3D models, and the code. The whole point of this project is for it to be open source, so you can code your own games. And I'd really love to see what ideas you come up with. I kept the game simple because I didn't want to spend three months programming this thing, but you should definitely try programming something more complex like Tetris or Galaga or even Doom. So let me know in the comments, what games would you add to this awesome device? Thank you for watching and see you in the next project.